Tom here from Lawrence Systems and Unify just rolled out a major update for their NAS platform with Unify Drive application version 3.0.9 and Unify OS for NAS 4.3.6. Both are released here in July of 2025 and both are required for all the new features I'll be talking about. Now the first big news is that Unify Drive now supports RAID groups and multiple storage pools, finally bringing more flexibility and efficiency. You can now configure RAID 5, 6, or 10, depending on your performance and redundancy needs. If you already have a Unify NAS, be aware. This isn't a seamless upgrade. You'll need to back up your data, reformat, and restore to take advantage of these new features. It's a bit of work, but the benefits are worth it if you want to use mismatched drive groups more efficiently. On the backup side, you still have your local and Unify NAS to NAS backups. They also support Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, and coming soon will be Amazon S3, Backblaze B2, and Wasabi later this year. And starting here at the dashboard, you can see that I have three HEDs and four SSDs. That's storage pool one and then storage pool two. Gives you the, all the status information, the Unify OS, drive version, backup statuses. And when we scroll down, it even gives us user statuses, and of course the recent sign-ins and detailed logging. More on that in a moment. To get right to the drive setup, we can click this and we can see our different RAID group options or multiple storage pool options or global hot spare option. These are all the new features that they've added. This has been enhanced quite a bit since the first release of this system. And you get a quick glance to see fully operational of the pool and the status of each of the drives. And of course, clicking on it, you can get more detail and more insight. Also the ability to either remove that storage pool, create a RAID group if you wanted to add more. Now a big change is the updated interface for finding and searching your files. You have the ability to search, but I will point out that will search this drive or the shares, but it will not search, even though I'm admin, other people's drives. But I can double click on mine. We have the search option, but I will complain a little bit that this feels out of order having this below the search because we have search, then we have file type, then we have the snapshots. I feel like the snapshot and the create and upload buttons should be above the search. Minor complaint, also worth noting, they've done a nice job of when you have snapshots set up, being able to quickly jump to the different versions in case you want to restore them. Because the current version, I only have three files, but I did on July 11th have several other files. And if I needed to restore any of those files or that version of the file, I can simply click on them and click restore. Now jumping back to the current version of the files, there's a few more options that come up when you click a file. I can preview this, rename, duplicate, move, copy, download, and let's actually switch to the share drives here. So I have a few videos in this, and let's look at it as a grid view. And you can see it gives me a preview of what these files are. And let's say I wanted to share any of these files, I could simply go here, create and copy link. I can also require a password, set an access limit for how many times, and set link expiration by a certain date. Of note, this requires you to have this attached to their cloud. It does not require any opening of ports. You do not have to attach the NAS to the cloud to get it set up, but if you want this functionality to be able to share files with a link, that is something you will need to do. Now, while we're here, we're gonna scroll down and say view all in system log. So let's go ahead and view that system log here. And you can see Tom uploaded an item to this particular share. We also have a services list, snapshot details, backup history. And yes, I did break a backup because I was curious what it would do. Storage details for me popping drives in and out, and then full details of activity. I think they've done a great job just giving you all the details from an admin perspective that's completely searchable for what's been going on with your NAS. Now, one of the things I want to point out on the snapshots, and we'll click on this because it has none set up yet, is we can click this snapshot. We can say, when do we want it to happen? And you would think this means it's only going to happen once a day. But if you say between, and let's set it for some work hours, let's say we want it to start at 8 a.m. and go to 5 p.m., you get the option here to say hourly, every two hours, etc. This option still exists even if you're doing it weekly. You can also do these between hours, so you can have hourly snapshots. It doesn't support any more fine grain than hourly, but that's probably adequate for most people. We're going to choose Monday through Friday, and we're going to go ahead and hit apply, and now we have a snapshot schedule. Now, something worth noting, the application supports up to 4,096 snapshots across all drives. So keep that limitation in mind. Also, there's only one schedule per share. I don't know if that'll change in the future. Now they still have directory integration for Microsoft Entre ID, Active Directory, Google, LDAP, and JumpCloud. Another big enhancement is deeper integration with Unify Identity, 
So we can go over here to admin and users. And at a glance, we can see what each user has access to. And we can also create new users and assign them a personal drive and for storage limits. Also assign them to shared drives. Creating this user automatically sends a link to the email address I provided, and then they have to go through an account activation and set up their unified identity. Being able to upload, manage, and share files from your Android or Apple phone, even while not on the same network as the NAS is a really nice feature. But of note, the Unify Identity Desktop app will only map drives if the system can reach the network that the Unify NAS is on. What really stands out to me is the system is focused. Unify is sticking to the simple fundamentals, streamlined storage with great cloud integration. That focus helps deliver real value both in price and performance, especially for home and small business users who want a NAS for only NAS functions, not everything else. At $499, I still think the UNAS Pro is a good buy here in 2025, and I feel they'll continue enhancing the platform. I hear a lot of people asking if they'll start offering applications or a Docker integration, but on a quad-core ARM Cortex A57 and only eight gigs of memory, I don't feel it would be a great fit, but also take away from the simplicity of this device. But what do you think of the UNIFI NAS platform? Leave those thoughts and comments down below. Join my forums for a more in-depth discussion about this and other topics. And you can hire or connect with me over at lawrencesystems.com. All right, and thanks.